welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our bonus coverage of HFES 2018 and Ergo X. We are here joined today by David Rempel and Chris Reed, uh, who are the co-chair and chair of Ergo X. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. I think the first thing we'll jump into is just to kind of get everybody up to speed. Could you tell us a little bit about your history? I think, David, we'll start with you. Sure. I'm an undergraduate engineering student, uh, but a medical doctor. I went to medical school after engineering, and then I studied internal medicine and occupational medicine. And when I was doing occupational medicine, I was interested in prevention, and musculoskeletal problems are a big issue in the workplace, and ergonomics is the solution. So that drew me into ergonomics, and I've been doing that ever since. Okay, and Chris? And, oh, sorry. And I'm um, currently the professor of uh, engineering at UC Berkeley and medicine at UC San Francisco. Excellent, and Chris, what about you? Uh, thanks for having us, Blake and Nick. Uh, so my background was out of uh, University of Central Florida, so I did all of my degrees there. Uh, essentially, electrical engineering undergrad, industrial engineering master's, PhD in, in industrial engineering as well. But then that last one focusing on human factors ergonomics. So uh, while I was finishing my PhD, I actually did three internships with the Boeing company uh, and got a taste of industry and aerospace, which was really attractive to me. And uh, from there, went into um, doing ergonomics and human factors for the Army after I graduated uh, and, and then moved on to working on spacesuit design for NASA um, for the Lockheed Martin Corporation. Um, and now back to the Boeing company. So it's a, it's a full circle come about and happy to do human factors and ergonomics for Boeing again. Great. So we're here to kind of discuss the ErgoX conference that happened today. Um, what do we call it? Symposium? Symposium is a good term. Symposium. Master workshop. I yeah. don't know if you guys want to call it that. There you go. <laughs> this is really interesting. So this is the first time that either Blake or, or myself actually went to this. And I have to say... Don't take offense to this because this is like the highest compliment I can give. It's probably the dorkiest conference that I've ever been to in the sense that people are sitting there in these uh, exoskeletons during a conference. <laughs> it was really cool. Like, it was really cool. So I, I was hoping that you can kind of tell us how we got to where we are with this conference. Like what has been going on over the past year to organize this thing and, and uh, kind of talk about you know, what, went, what happened today. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that I, about a year ago at the last HFES meeting, we were thinking about whether to do another Ergo X conference and realize that, that exoskeletons are a hot topic. And we thought, let's do exoskeletons or augmented reality or some other topic like that. We picked exoskeletons. And Chris has really been running with the whole thing since then, drawing in the right people, drawing in people that are developers, academics, end users. He knows them all, people doing standards. And so it started a year ago and it ended today, an hour ago. Right. So, so one thing I guess that we didn't know is that, uh, you know, Ergo X is not just, or in the past it hasn't been exoskeletons. This is the first year that exoskeletons is, is kind of the focus, right? Um, can we look forward to more focus on exoskeletons or are we kind of going to focus on other topics or what can we look forward to in the future there? Yeah, I think uh, one thing we learned um, from the past is um, how do you attract the right crowds of people to learn about human factors, learn about ergonomics? And uh, what we found was through a hot sizzling topic, something with a sexy title. So exoskeletons essentially en embodied that. Uh, it allowed us to play with the engineering communities, play with the end user communities, play with ourselves who are human factors, research professionals, bring us all together and then look at it at the broadest sense. How can exoskeletons help people? And that's on the medical side of the house, on the military side of the house, the industrial side of the house. So, you know, to be honest with you, I'm really excited with how it turned out. We went from an expectation of about 60 people to 135 people. So it, it really exploded. People were excited to come out. Well, it's a great blend between like having actual exhibits where you can see people walking around using these systems, but also, to, like you said, talking about the various applications. Because I've really, had not, we've talked a few times about exoskeletons on the show before, but really I had only thought about it kind of from like the military or DARPA perspective, and I had not really thought about it from, you know, the rehabilitation perspective in the medical field. So it was, pretty, it was a really great conference. Well, you saw Thank some you. of the talks today, you know, on rehabilitation of people that have a stroke. 
because they need that um, someone to help and guide them through the movements of their limbs in order to recover, and they need a lot of exposure to that time doing that recovery, and the exoskeletons can provide that time. Yeah, it was amazing that like you can almost give somebody the ability to walk again that hasn't been able to, even with the, the kind of harsher learning curve that comes with it and kind of the regulations that are centered around it. It's still amazing technology. Yeah, and so I guess, can we pick out some highlights from today's event? Because I, I don't sure. know, we, we were pretty excited about the NASA yeah. talk. Uh, we just talked to uh, Sudecker a little bit earlier, um, and uh, his talk was really interesting about sort of the... Um, designing spacesuits for modularity and, and to adapt for human uh, anthropometric data. So wh what are some highlights in your minds about uh, today's conference, symposium? You know, to be honest with you, it's hard for me to answer that question because I was running around, like my parents say, <laughs> as a chicken with my head cut off. Sure. I had to make sure all the dots were connected, making sure everybody was on time and squeezing people where they needed to be squeezed. But, you know, to be honest, looking back, because I know I was recording something subconsciously, um, the, the things that I don't know least about, so the medical stuff, really had me saying, wow, I cannot believe that. Yes, we're, we're helping people walk again for people who are paralyzed from spinal injury. We're helping people with rehabilitation, as, as David mentioned. Um, but then, of course, the, the cool factor came back with the, the DARPA stuff. So it, it took me back to... Um, my kid in the candy store days, right? So I'm 13 years old watching Exo Squad on television uh, in the, in the mid-90s, and it's like, man, that'd be cool if exoskeletons went to Mars and you could do all these different things. And here we are today actually doing that. It's like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe we're looking at military-grade exoskeletons while talking about spacesuits and going to Mars. <laughs> That's cool topics for sure. What about you, Dave? Well, for me, the highlights were really to see how far these exoskeletons have been developed. You had a lot of, um, there's about 18 companies in the country who are developing exoskeletons at different levels, and they're being used in industry now. And we heard studies from Ford and from GM where they're having uh, workers use these devices, hundreds of workers, for six months, one year already. So they're, they're out there, they're being used intensively, and part of the reason for this meeting is really to talk about how can we um, integrate better testing of the devices in a systematic way through standards and through exchange of research information. So we get, so we begin to learn how to optimize the designs of these devices. Yeah, I think one highlight for me was just to kind of see how focused um, something like this can be, right? I'm a, I'm a nerd at heart, right? So like I've gone to Star Wars conventions and that's all about Star Wars and this was this was really cool because it was all about exoskeletons and you could feel it in the room, like everyone was there for that one thing. Uh, it was really cool. Blake, what, what was your highlight? So this is something that Nick and I noticed when we were sitting kind of in the back of the room, like just observing everything and listening to the talks, is I didn't realize how comfortable these things could be. Because sitting right next to me was a guy in army fatigues that had an exoskeleton on, and he didn't seem uncomfortable or anything at all. So it was awesome to see not just like everybody walking around getting to test these exoskeletons, but to see somebody who spent the better part of the entire day sitting in one and didn't seem like it was really driving any kind of fatigue or anything like that. So it was incredible just to see the actual application. Well, did, did you talk to that guy? Oh, uh, I didn't get to, oh, no. Well, if you talk to him, he, he basically walks um, for about 10 miles every day in that, with that exoskeleton. That's on, incredible. And is doing it comfortably without, you know, pain, and it helps him move. That's awesome. That's incredible. That is absolutely amazing. So looking forward to the future, uh, what can we kind of expect from ErgoX next year? Is it going to be all exoskeletons? Are we branching out to other topics? Can we talk about it yet? <laughs> yeah, I think we can. We can announce it. Um, we're def this, the success of this one on exoskeletons really pushes us to do it again. Maybe in, a, in one day, maybe a day and a half. We're not sure yet. But also we want to add a new topic, and it's likely to be um, you know, automated, automated vehicle driving automatic vehicle okay. transportation, or possibly augmented reality. So we're trying to figure out what are those topics going to be for EXO, for, for Ergo X next year. Yeah, and, and, and to really seed off of that, you know, one thing that we got to do last year was during the Human Factors Ergonomics Conference, the Occupational Ergonomics Technical Group seeded some hot topics. Um, exoskeletons was one of them. And so we saw from the turnout from that hot topic 
what could potentially happen on a, a grander scale, like what we did today with Ergo X. And so there are certain topics like automated vehicles, um, augmented reality that you're going to see in this year's Human Factors Conference that are much more dialed down, more of a seed, so to say, um, to see, let's see what the turnout is for, for those particular talks. If they're good, I think we, you might see them next year. Great. Well, um, I know we're kind of cutting close on time here, but I want to ask before we leave. So a lot of our listeners are kind of junior, uh, still getting started in their careers. And I was wondering if there was one piece of advice that you had, w that you wish you had when you started, uh, what would it be? I'll start with you, David. Well, I think it's uh, to, to really focus on in terms of research and study on the things that you get most excited about, that you're passionate about, and really get into it in a deep way. Do research, work in a laboratory, begin doing design work. And uh, you know, work work in that setting as soon as you can in a in a in an in depth way. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I I do like that excitement comment because that's the geek in us, that's the nerd in us that right. keeps us moving forward, right? We want to see. Uh, <laughs> let's go uh, back to the future style. We want to see those flying cards and hoverboards, um, but we're, we're not there yet. So what can we do to move that along? I think if I could do a takeaway and and, and learn something earlier it would be project management skills. I didn't really learn that until I got into my career. Um, I did it in school, but you know, understanding resources, understanding finance, um, business acumen, all the things that were traditionally not trained in an academic engineering sense, but that come in as a practicality sense later on when you're in the, the corporate world or you're in the, the government world, because you got to understand how to talk in different ways. All right, Blake, did you have any other follow-up questions? I don't, but I like both of your points, especially like following up trying to figure out how you can gain project management skills before you step into the field or understanding how to interact with engineers if you're not an engineer. Like from Nick and I come from a human factor psychology background, so it's very different from academia. So I think that is super important when you walk in to a brand new you know, job or whatever it may be. So before we go, um, I just want to ask you if there's any place our listeners want to find you to find out what's going on with ErgoX or, or your personal work, where can they go and find you? Well, for our stuff at UC Berkeley, we have a website at the um, Ergonomics Research Program at UC Berkeley, and I think you'll post that. Yeah, I'll online. have links to all these in the, okay, that's in the description. Stuff. All right, Chris? And then uh, from my end, uh, the Boeing Company actually is doing a lot of this type of research for exoskeletons and is involved with the Human Factors and Ergonomic Society. So, of course, you have the, the Boeing.com website in general. But in addition to that, there's the ErgoX website, looking forward to 2019. Uh, and then also we have the wearable robotics community. So, again, looking at it from here are the developers that are actually making these types of systems. And then looking at it from the standards community. So, ASTM F48. Um, all three of them were involved in making a successful ErgoX this year, and we look forward to, again, continuing that venture next year. Excellent. Well, we are looking forward to ErgoX next year as well. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show, guys. We really appreciate it, uh, talking about all the stuff coming out of ErgoX this today, thank, thank this year. Thank you for what you guys do. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in the future. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to follow along with these guys, we will post links to all their stuff in the uh, description. Until next time, we like to sign off with it depends because as you know, in the field, everything depends on the human, right? So on the count of three, we'll say it depends and sign this thing off. Ready? Three, two, one. It, it depends. depends.